Hello, and welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Sharon from Ventura County Library, and today we're going to talk about fruits and vegetables. Yum, yum. Some good stories coming up. To get started, though, let's do our welcome song. Can I see your hands, please? Just like this. Hands, hands, hands. There you go. Here we go. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Now it's time to have some fun. Read some stories, sing some songs. Some are short and some are long. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Now it's time to have some fun. Very nice. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Very good. I think we're going to do just a quick action rhyme. You'll know it. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. People do this one differently. Um, so this is how we'll do it today. First of all, I want to make sure we know where all our parts and pieces are. So can you find your head? Can you find your shoulders? Can you find your knees? And can you find your toes? If you found all head, shoulders, knees, and toes, we are ready to start. Okay, get them ready, get them ready. Here we go. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Would you like to try that faster? <laughs> okay, let's see. Here we go. One, two, three. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Okay. I wiggle my fingers. Can you wiggle your fingers? I wiggle my toes, wiggle them in your shoes, if, you have, if you're wearing shoes. I wiggle my shoulders, I wiggle my nose. And now all my wiggles are all out of me. And we can sit for our first story. Okay. Our very first story is called, Try It. How Frida Kaplan change the way we eat. This is a special story because it's about someone who is real. They're a real person. And so books about real people are called biographies. Can you say biography with me? One, two, three, biography. That's right. So bio means life. And so this is a story of a part of Frida Kaplan's life. And I want to show you the back, because these aren't real photos of her. This is someone's illustrations, but here is Frida. And look at, she's su surrounded by all kinds of fruits and vegetables, and we're going to find out why. Here go. Try it. And the author of this book is Mara Rockliffe, and the illustrations are done by Giselle Potter. We're able to read this book thanks to Simon & Schuster for the permission. To, to read it and show you all the beautiful pictures. So let's find out about Frida Kaplan. There's something here where it says, when a produce pioneer, Frida Kaplan was offered a crispy, crunchy, sweet or spicy fruit or vegetable, she would always try it. Would you? Oh, it's asking us that question. Hmm. Do you try things at least once or sometimes even twice or three times? I do. I love it. I love trying new things. And it says a produce pioneer. That means she was interested in trying all kinds of fruit or vegetables. That's what produce is, right? Here's the front 
page of Try It. And here we are into our story. When Frida Kaplan went to work at the 7th Street Produce Market, she saw boxes of bananas, piles of potatoes, truckloads of tomatoes, and apples as far as the eye could see. Fires became came, I'm sorry, buyers came to order fruits and vegetables for restaurants, grocery stores, and roadside stands. Everyone ate apples and bananas and potatoes and tomatoes, so the market sold a lot. Now, there's nothing wrong with a potato. Still, Frida thought, why not give something new a try? Isn't that important to try new things? What about these nice fresh mushrooms? Frida asked. The men at the market told her, nobody eats those. She said, try it. And they were like, no, nope, nah, sorry, sister. Mm, not, not bad. See, so someone did try. Frida thought more people might eat mushrooms if they had a chance. Frida was persistent. She liked selling mushrooms and people started to like eating them. They ordered them at restaurants. They tossed them in their carts at the grocery store. They snatched them up at roadside stands. Frida sold so many mushrooms, people started calling her the Mushroom Queen. <laughs> there she is. Soon, Frida had her own spot at the market. When the men went on selling apples and bananas and potatoes and tomatoes, she sold mushrooms and more. And when someone brought in something new, all the other produce sellers said, go see Frida, take it to Frida. Frida will try anything. And so look at, he brought a new, what does that look like? It looks like an orange, but it looks red on the inside. Hmm. Frida got a funny feeling in her elbows in her elbows, can you believe it? In her elbows, when she tasted something new and special, something she was sure people would like to try. With a good name, we, we call them Chinese gooseberries, she, they said. And she said, but they come from New Zealand. Well, they're brown and fuzzy like a kiwi bird. <gasps> and so, that's how we came to call these kiwis. And she always put on a sticker to explain what was inside. Because when something's brown and fuzzy, your first choice is not necessarily to eat it. So she wanted them to know what it was and she always had one cut open so people could see how beautiful it, the fruit was. And sometimes she would bring a recipe or two, kiwi tart, kiwi jam, who wouldn't want to taste something a little different from an ordinary apple or a potato? Especially if it was crispy like jicama, crunchy like sugar snap pea, juicy like a blood orange, creamy like cherimoya, sweet like champagne grapes, and Asian pears, or spicy, like a black radish. All of that looks delicious. It took a while for everyone to get used to Frida's funny looking fruits. A watermelon can't be seedless. Yes, it can. Seedless watermelon she introduced in 1962. Bananas should be yellow, man. Nope. There are red bananas, and they started appearing in her produce in 1978. <gasps> Is this from outer space or what? Kiwano, or horned melon, oh, 1984, she was selling it in her market. Yes, but Frida felt it in her elbows. She, when she felt it in her elbows, she knew it was going to catch on eventually. Habanero peppers, 1990. Dragon fruit, 1994. Buddha's hand. That's kind of, it's like a citrus, kind of like a lemon or an orange or a lime, but a different shape. 2000. Mangosteen, 2008. Fresh lychee or lychee, depending on how you say it. 2015. 
The 7th Street Produce Market still had boxes of bananas, piles of potatoes, truckloads of tomatoes, and apples as far as the eye could see. But now, thanks to Frida, it also had mounds of mangosteen, heaps of jicama, and quantities of quince. Right there. Year after year, Frida kept coming up with fresh ideas, and everybody was all ears, especially when she introduced the baby ears of corn. Farmers dug for tips on what to grow. She suggested planting purple potatoes. Have you ever seen purple potatoes in the grocery store? Take a look for them. They're amazing. Cooks peppered her with questions. Oop, I think she's showing them the habanero pepper. Reporters pleaded for a scoop about the next big thing. And she always had something in her basket to show them. It might be prickly, like nopale or cactus pad, gooey, like passion fruit, funny shaped, like star fruit. It looks like this, but when you slice it this way and open it up, it looks like a star. Or flat, like a donut peach. Now, of course, Frida didn't like absolutely everything, but she was also willing to try. Here she is trying durian. The hard thing about durian is that it smells not very good. It kind of smells a little bit like the garbage can, and so sometimes that one's hard to convince people to buy. But in some places in the world, it is a wonderful thing. Frida's grown-up daughters came to work with her, and they had fresh ideas, too. How about green cauliflower? Why not yellow tomatoes? Or purple asparagus? Together, they found even more surprising fruits and vegetables to put in supermarkets and on dinner tables all across America. See purple potatoes among the things here, the purple asparagus here, and all kinds of mixed veggies in the stir fry there. Because once people have eaten apples and bananas, purple potatoes and yellow tomatoes, kiwi fruit, sugar snap peas, and spaghetti squash, who knows what they'll try next. Do you see this artichokes here? Oh, fabulous, fearless Frida. And these are Frida and her daughters. Try it. Maybe you can pick something new the next time you go to the grocery store and try it and see what you think. And you may recognize, you may wonder, why are these so special you see them at the store? Well. You didn't really see them in the store way back when Frida started selling produce. She's one of the people who would encourage everyone to try something new. Try it by Mara Rockliffe. Okay. Well, let's do a rhyme with our bees this morning. Hmm. Here we go. Let's make sure we have six Bs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and let's put them up here. That's one B, two Bs, three Bs, four Bs, five Bs, and six Bs. Six buzzing bumblebees flying round the hive. One buzzes off, and that leaves how many? One, two, three, four, five. Five buzzing bumblebees flying near my door. One buzzes off, and that leaves one, two, three, four. Four buzzing bumblebees 
flying round a tree. One buzzes off, and that leaves one, two, three. Three buzzing bumblebees in the sky so blue. One buzzes off, and that leaves two. Two buzzing bumblebees flying by the sun. One buzzes off, and that leaves one. One buzzing bumblebee looking for some fun. It buzzes off, and that leaves none. Well, let's put them all back on the board so we're ready to do it for another time. Can you help me count? Here's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. Thank you for counting with me. We're gonna try a little rhyme. Two little hands go clap, clap, clap. Two little feet, okay, ready? Go tap, tap, tap. Two little fists go thump, thump, thump. Two little legs go jump, jump, jump. And one little body turns around and everyone sits quietly down. Very nice. Well, I have a garden vegetable story for you. It's about this gardener. Now, unfortunately, he's not good about sharing. And we're going to find out by the end of the story if he learns to share. I think it's nice to share what you have with others. But he didn't feel that way at the beginning. Let's see what happens at the end, okay? It's called Muncha, Muncha, Muncha. It's by Candace Fleming. And G. Brian Karras did the illustrations. We're reading it with permission of Simon and Schuster. Thank you to them for letting us be able to read this. I think there's this vegetable involved. What vegetable is this? That's right, a carrot. For years, Mr. McGreeley dreamed of planting a garden. He dreamed of getting his hands dirty, of growing yummy vegetables, and then gobbling them all up. <laughs> but he never once tried it until this spring. By golly, I'm going to plant a garden. So he hoed and he sowed and he watched his garden grow. Lettuce, carrots, Peas, tomatoes. Yum, yum, yummy, said Mr. McGreeley. I'll soon fill my tummy with crisp, fresh veggies. Do you see another group of animals that might enjoy the garden? Do you see them down here? Who is that? They're bunnies or rabbits or bunny rabbits. How many are there? Three. Mm. But one night when the sun went down and the moon came up, the three hungry bunnies appeared and they came on tippy toe, tippy, 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 pat. And they got in the garden and they muncha, muncha, muncha. The next morning, when Mr. McGreeley saw his, saw his gnawed sprouts, he was angry. So he built a small wire fence all around his vegetable garden. There, he declared, no bunny can get into my garden now. Do you see who's watching? <laughs> well, the sun went down and the moon came up and here they come. Tippy, 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 pat. Spring hurdle, dash, dash, dash. And they got inside and muncha, muncha, muncha. 
The next morning, when Mr. McGreeley saw his nibbled leaves and gnawed sprouts, he was really angry. So he built a tall wooden wall behind the small wire fence all around his vegetable garden. Humph, he huffed. Those flop ears will never get over it. No bunny can get into my garden now. Do you see where the bunnies are? Do you see? They're watching how he's building. Do you think they're figuring out a plan? Yeah. Well, the sun went down and the moon came up and tippy, 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 pat. Dig, scrabble, scratch, scratch, scratch. They got under it. Spring hurdle, dash, dash, dash. They did all that they needed to do to get into the garden and they muncha, muncha, muncha. The next morning when Mr. McGreeley saw his chewed stems, his nibbled leaves and his gnawed sprouts, he was really, really angry. So he dug a deep wet trench outside a tall wooden wall behind the small wire fence all around his vegetable garden. Ha, he snorted. Those puff tails can't get under it. They can't get over it. No bunny can get into my garden now. And the sun went down and the moon came up. Tippy, tippy, pat. Dive, paddle, splash, splash, splash. Dig, scrabble, scratch, scratch, scratch. Spring, hurdle, dash, dash, dash. <gasps> they got inside and they muncha, muncha, muncha. Oh, no. The next morning, when Mr. McGreeley saw his chomped blossoms, chewed stems, and nibbled leaves, and his gnawed sprouts, and he was furious. That's a word for super, 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 super angry. So he hammered and blocked and sawed and stopped and drilled and filled and trapped and locked. And he built a huge, enormous thing before the deep, wet trench outside the tall wooden wall behind the small wire fence all around his vegetable garden. I've outsmarted those twitch whiskers for sure, he exclaimed. They can't get through it. They can't get under it. They can't get over it. No bunny, no way, no how can get into my vegetable garden now. That kind of makes me sad. That's a lot of work. It might just be easier to share. So the sun went down and the moon came up and tippy, 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 <gasps> stop. The three hungry bunnies looked and smelled and touched the huge, enormous thing in front of them. And tippy, tippy, pat, the bunnies hopped away. So they couldn't get in that way. The next morning, Mr. McGreeley saw his untouched vegetables and he was happy. I beat the bunnies. He whooped and did a jiggly wiggly victory dance. And then he took his basket and climbed over, jumped across, squeezed between and crawled under until he reached his vegetable garden. Ah, sighed Mr. McGreeley at last. And smacking his lips, he picked and pulled up lettuce, carrots, peas, tomatoes. And with his basket overflowing, he reached inside for something yummy. But look at what happened. Look up close. <gasps> While he was doing his happily, happy, jiggly, wiggly dance, the bunnies saw his basket and they hopped in. Look at their, their ears. And then they were in his basket when he was putting his vegetables. What do you think he's gonna find when he's gonna reach in and grab a vegetable to eat? <gasps> Ta-da, he found them in his basket. Muncha, muncha, muncha. What do you think he's going to do? Yep, he finally decided it was much better and much easier to share. <laughs> and that is the end of Muncha, Muncha, Muncha. There are more stories of Mr. McGreeley and his bunny friends that you can find at the library. This was by Candace Fleming. So it's time for our rainbow fun. You ready? Take a deep breath and blow it out. 
and, and hum. Hmm, and here we go. I know the colors of rainbow fun. Green like a frog and yellow like the sun. Orange like a pumpkin, white like the snow. A ruby red apple and a jet black crow. Purple like a flower, brown like a bear. A little pink pig and a blue shirt to wear. I want to put it on a fruit. What is the fruit that is on here? The apple. Okay, what color is the apple? It's red. Yep, there's the shirt. We talked about fruit today, so I'm going to have the fruit wear the blue shirt. But there, we also talked about vegetables today. So let's take that off. And I want you to be thinking while we're singing the song again, what on here is a vegetable? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. I know the colors of rainbow fun, green like a frog and yellow like the sun, orange like a pumpkin, white like the snow, a ruby red apple and a jet black crow, purple like a flower, brown like a bear, a little pink pig and a blue shirt to wear. <gasps> Did you say the pumpkin was... A vegetable? That's right, it's a type of squash. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. We're gonna sing our goodbye song. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. See you next time. Bye.